Lions and tigers are both apex predators, both giant cats. But if you dropped one into the other's world, it probably wouldn't survive. That's how different they really are. And yet, they're cousins. Close cousins, even. Same genus, similar build, same sharp teeth and crushing jaws. But one ended up as a golden showman, ruling open savannas in massive family groups, and the other became a striped ghost, vanishing into forests, hunting solo, and avoiding almost everything, including its own kind. So what happened? How did two animals so closely related end up living such radically different lives? Lions and tigers might come from the same genus, but they couldn't be more different in how they live their lives. Lions evolved in Africa's open landscapes, dry savannas, grasslands, and semi-deserts where you can see for hundreds of meters in every direction. In a place like that, stalking isn't easy. Prey animals can spot you coming from a long way off, and you're rarely the only predator in the area. That kind of setting doesn't reward loners. It rewards numbers, coordination, and backup. And that's exactly what the lion developed. They became social cats, not just loosely social like cheetahs or leopards, full-on bonded long-term pride systems. Groups of females, their cubs, and a few dominant males working together, not just to hunt, but to hold territory, raise young, and defend themselves from other lions. This setup allowed them to take down large prey like zebra and wildebeest more efficiently, and it gave their cubs a better shot at surviving in a dangerous competitive ecosystem. Now flip the setting. Tigers evolved in Asia, not in open plains, but in dense forests wetlands, swamps, and even snow-covered coniferous forests in the north. Places where visibility is low, cover is everywhere, and prey is scattered and harder to track. In that kind of environment, stealth becomes the most important weapon, and stealth and teamwork don't mix. A group of hunters crashing through the undergrowth would give themselves away instantly. So the tiger adapted to be silent, precise, and independent. It doesn't just prefer solitude, its entire survival model depends on it. Everything from its hunting technique to its territorial behavior is built around being alone. Tigers don't share kills, they don't hunt in pairs, and they don't tolerate rivals. A single adult male can control a territory of hundreds of square kilometers, overlapping with a few females, sure but fiercely defended from other males. And here's the thing. Both systems work, but only in the right environment. A tiger dropped into lion country wouldn't have the backup to protect a kill. A lion dropped into tiger habitat would blow every ambush. They're not just different because of chance. They're different because their landscapes demanded different answers to the same problem. How to survive as a giant predator. And once that split happened, the social lion and the solitary tiger, everything else started to drift. Even their bodies followed different paths. Because surviving in a pride and surviving alone, those are two very different jobs. Take the lion's mane. It's not just for looks. A thick, dark mane signals strength, age, and testosterone levels. It's a billboard, telling rivals to back off and females that this male's got good genes. It also protects the neck during fights, which is useful when your life includes regular battles with other males for territory or mating rights. You only need armor like that if you're fighting in public. Tigers don't need any of that. They're not in open spaces. They're not showing off. They're not constantly fighting other males face to face. So, no mane. Instead, their fur is built for invisibility. The stripes aren't just pretty, they break up the tiger's outline in forest light, especially when sunlight filters through trees. It's camouflage made for ambush. A lion doesn't need that kind of subtlety in an open savanna, but a tiger depends on it. Their builds are different too. Tigers are heavier, stockier, with massive forelimbs built for power. When they hit prey, it's like a tree falling. One shot, one chance. That bulk comes at a cost. Tigers aren't built to run far, but they don't have to. They get close, they explode, they finish the job. Lions are more compact and agile, built for short chases and coordination. 
They don't need to do everything themselves, they've got backup, so their build is a little more versatile. Even their skulls and bite force reflect their tactics. Tigers have slightly larger skulls proportionally and more powerful bites. Again, they're solo hunters. No one's coming to help if they mess up, so their tools have to be sharper, stronger, and more reliable. It's not that one is better than the other, it's just that they were built to solve different problems. One evolved to stand out and fight in daylight, the other evolved to vanish and kill in silence. And when it comes to how they actually hunt, lions and tigers take completely different risks. A lion doesn't have to get it right on the first try. That's the luxury of having a team. If one lion gets spotted, others are already in position. They can afford to make noise, to chase, to adapt mid-hunt. Most of their hunts still fail. Maybe three out of four end in nothing. But because they live in a group, they get more chances and the losses are spread out. Tigers don't get that margin for error. They need every step to be perfect. One wrong move and the prey bolts. No teammates, no second attempt. That's why they spend so much energy getting close. A tiger might stalk something for half an hour before even making a move, waiting for the right angle, the right wind, the right gap. Then it's one explosion of speed and power aiming for the neck or throat. If it lands clean, the hunt's over in seconds. If not, the tiger goes hungry and it could be days before the next real opportunity. Their diets reflect that difference too. Tigers usually go for medium-sized prey – deer, boar, sometimes wild cattle. But when the opportunity's there, they can bring down animals twice their size. Lions, with a pride behind them, can aim bigger more often, even going after giraffes or buffalo if the conditions are right. And when they eat, it's a feeding frenzy. Everyone piles on, fighting for position. Cubs learn early to be quick, or they don't eat much at all. Tigers don't share. Once they make a kill, they'll drag it off somewhere hidden and defend it, not just from other tigers, but from scavengers like dolls or leopards. They don't eat in the open, they don't make a scene. It's quiet, controlled, and always on edge. Because when you're hunting solo, you're always one injury away from starving. But the split between lions and tigers goes back further than their behavior or hunting style. These two cats didn't just wake up one day and decide to be different. They evolved that way, slowly, over millions of years, shaped by geography, climate, and isolation. Both species come from a shared ancestor, a big pantherine cat that likely lived somewhere in Eurasia around two to three million years ago. From there, things started to branch off. One lineage moved southwest, eventually adapting to the open environments of Africa and evolving into what we now know as the lion. The other stayed in Asia, where forests were spreading and climates were shifting, and over time, it became the tiger. It wasn't just about location. It was about the pressures each cat faced once it got there. In Africa, lions were surrounded by herds of fast, powerful prey animals, and also by intense competition. Hyenas, leopards, wild dogs, and even crocodiles. It wasn't enough to just be strong. Lions had to be fast, coordinated, and capable of defending kills from every direction. The social structure wasn't just a bonus, it was a necessity. Meanwhile, in Asia, the tiger's ancestors weren't dealing with huge herds or open plains. They had to master thick cover, scattered prey, and long distances between meals. Ambush worked better than endurance. Silence worked better than speed. And there wasn't the same level of competition from other large predators. Tigers didn't need a group. In fact, solitude gave them an edge. No food to share, no territory disputes with the species, just one big cat running its own show. And over time, those pressures carved out two very different cats. Even though they still look surprisingly similar on the surface, Genetically, lions and tigers can still interbreed and produce offspring, which tells you just how close they are. But in terms of how they function in the wild, they're now worlds apart. There's also size to consider. Tigers ended up with a broader range and more variation, 
The smallest subspecies, like the Sumatran tiger, live in dense rainforest and are built for maneuvering through tight cover. The largest, like the Siberian tiger, adapted to freezing temperatures and giant prey, growing into the biggest cats on Earth. Lions stayed relatively uniform in size, with some regional variation, but nowhere near the extremes tigers reached. So while they came from the same blueprint, the world forced them to specialize, one for cooperation in the open, the other for independence in the shadows. That evolutionary split is why we see two top predators today that barely behave like relatives at all. So, in the end, lions and tigers aren't different because one's African and the other's Asian. They're different because their entire lives were shaped by different rules. Lions evolved in open landscapes where cooperation meant survival. Tigers were shaped by isolation, by terrain that rewarded patience, stealth, and strength in solitude. They're both apex predators, both incredibly powerful. But power doesn't mean much without a system to back it up. And what we see in lions and tigers are two completely different systems. One built around the group, the other built around the individual. Same genus, same tools, same starting point. But the environments they adapted to pulled them in opposite directions until they became two of the most iconic and most misunderstood predators on the planet. That's why lions and tigers are so different. Not because evolution made them choose different paths, but because nature forced them to. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.